right, we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. So let's go ahead and uh, pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this amazing day. Thank you for Brother Jose and how you've raised him up in our congregation. Thank you for his gifts. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ who purchased him and all of the saints. And that thank you for the uh, indwelling power of the Holy Spirit who is filling him even now and fill him with all the fullness of God. Thank you that we can uh, set him apart. Consider your calling on his life this morning. And also just rejoice with how you're doing this, Lord. We're incredibly amazed and so grateful. Now bless our time of Q&A. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. I'm sure, hopefully, we'll have some more people that come. But we're going to go ahead and get started. And um, we're, we're going to introduce our brother, um, the associate pastor or Hispanic pastor candidate, Jose Salgado. He'll be one of our associate pastors if we um, vote on him next week. But um, we want to answer your questions. I got a ton of questions here. I don't know that we'll get to them all. Uh, but it's so good to have you here today, Jose and your wife. Cynthia, can you introduce your, your wife and children to the congregation? Um, yes, good morning. Um, well, my wife, uh, her name is Cynthia Salgado. Um, and my children are the twins, Lisbeth and Lisette Salgado. And the little one is Lynette, the troublemaker. <laughs> so uh, just um, praise God for my family. I mean, uh, God has been so good. So. Amen. Amen. And happy Father's Day, by the way, and to all the fathers, happy Father's Day. Well, uh, Jose, if you could just give a brief account uh, and keep it brief because we have a lot of questions, but a brief account of your testimony so um, people can hear it. And also, we'll, we'll have you give a, a little more detailed account next week. Um, but just to start off with, um, tell us how you came to know Jesus. Yes, um, I don't want to expand so much, but um, if I'm expanding or if I'm taking a lot of the time, you tell me, Pastor. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was born in Mexico, and um, pretty much my life before Christ, um, I was raised by a, a good woman, my grandmother. Uh, the reason why I was raised by my grandmother is because at the age of four years old, my, uh, my father, they killed my father. Um, my father was, uh, I don't know if I'm saying the right word, a hitman. Yeah. Is that okay? So, so he, was, he, was, he was doing that, and he died at a very young age, around 22 years. He was 22 years old, and at that time, it was just me and another sister. So my mother, um, she was a widow who didn't know what to do or how to raise uh, two children. So... What she did is uh, she came to the U.S. and left me and my sister with uh, my grandmother. So um, I was four years old. And I was, at that time, I didn't understand, you know, the things that were happening. I was growing up uh, so bitter, um, angry at many things in life, uh, just to know that I didn't have my father, I didn't have my mother with me. And that really um, put me in a place where I had a lot of hatred for my mom. Um, so at the age of um, 14 years old, finally, I got to see my mother since, since four years old all the way to 14 years old, so 10 years away from my mother. And the first conversation that I had with her, it was like, why? You know, why you do that? Why you did it? You know? And that really, you know, I was taking a lot of every time I could, uh, every opportunity that I had just to, I wanted to hurt my mother with words and just to see her cry, you know, that was something for me happy. But then uh, little by little, I started hanging, um, hanging around with the wrong crowd, uh, just uh, cultivating more hate in my heart, doing things that I was not supposed to do being in jail, uh, until finally one day, 
uh, and I'm trying to keep this <laughs> brief, uh, short, but one day I was uh, at work and I was in charge of, or I was the, uh, the boss of this crew. And one time I met a man and this man was different from every other people that they were there because this man was, uh, I can sense his uh, character and just, he was just different. He will sit down away from everybody. He was not participating in jokes. He was just praying for his food. And that's something that caught my attention. So what I asked him is like, are you a church guy? And he answered, uh, yes, you know. So after that, he started sharing the gospel with me. And that was a seed planted in my heart that later, you know, when I came to know Jesus, uh, it's just like I, I, I truly, I was face to face with a man, a uh, transformed man who shared the gospel with me and not only with words, but with his uh, living testimony, his daily living life. And that was something that, you know, impacted my life. Um, so after, after he shared the gospel with me, um, I became a Christian. Um, I just surrendered my life to uh, Christ. And I say, Lord, you know, here I am. Do whatever you have to do with my life. Um, and I belong to you. And then we, I met my wife. Uh, we got married. And the Lord gave us children. This is a short testimony. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Praise God that he can raise people up and he just snatches them out of all different places. Isn't God good? And all the time. Amen. Um, so tell us about your calling to ministry and, uh, and then specifically uh, to the ministry of Iglesia Esperanza Viva. Um, how, do you, um, how do you feel that you are called to the ministry? How do you know that this is what God wants you to do? Yes. Um, I believe, uh, well, you know, ever since I became a Christian, it was just um, hungry for the Word of God. Um, but this hunger, it was increasing more and more. Um, at first, I thought, well, this is how Christian life it should be, right? So um, I was just getting deeper into the Word of God. But at one point, I was not satisfied. I, was, I wanted more. So uh, I started having a desire to uh, just to know how to prepare sermons, how to just how to go outside and, 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 and preach Christ. And that desire was increasing more and more to the point that sometimes, you know, my wife will find me uh, talking to myself, <laughs> talking to the air, uh, trying to preach the, you know, to whoever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and one time I remember she was like, are you okay? <laughs> so, but I was just, that desire, it's been increasing in my heart, you know, daily. Uh, and, and I'm just, uh, yeah, I mean, another thing is that um, I have um, I have Christian friends, uh, brothers in the church uh, that they are saying, you know, I think the Lord is calling you to preach. Uh, we see something in you, and you know that is a confirmation I think from God that with my desire, with and then the doors that He's opening, and I'm willing to just to do whatever the Lord wants me to do. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, we have seen that in you, uh, Jose, that God has given you a sweet gift, not only of preaching, which we got to see not long ago, but also of shepherding. Um, you, he, you love to call, and I love talking with you and fellowshipping with you, and I never want to get off the phone. I'm really sorry. I know you're busy. But um, now tell us specifically how you came to Iglesia Esperanza Viva and how God has raised you up here. How have you um, started preaching and doing the work of the ministry, shepherding here? How, how, tell us the story of that. Yeah, so I came to... Uh, First, I was, when I was living in the city, I was just hungry for the Word of God. 
and I wanted to hear sound doctrine, uh, a true preacher. So because I couldn't find a church in the city, uh, then I started researching uh, a church with sound doctrine and a church that, uh, that we are really, really uh, Christ-like, that are representing Christ. So what I did is uh, I, I wrote to, I don't know if uh, some of you are familiar with the website, uh, I'll Be Honest, of the ministry, I'll Be Honest. So I wrote to them, and they referred me to this uh, congregation. And when I visit, you know, um, I visit over here, and that impacted my life uh, because just the, the word that it was being preached from the pulpit. Um, but then after that, you know, uh, I went back to, uh, because I wanted a closer church from my house, uh, I went to another church by the city where I found Pastor Jose. <laughs> And then after that, uh, you know, uh, you know, God is uh, bringing us here, um, and uh, that's how I, that's how I came to this to this uh, congregation. Um, anything else? Yeah, no, that's really interesting. So you visited here what six years ago, seven years ago, um, something like that? Maybe seven years ago. Yeah, I remember meeting yes. you. Yes. And then God brought you to Pastor Jose, and then God brought Pastor Jose to us. Talk about the providence of God. I get goosebumps or Holy Spirit bumps, sorry. And then, um, and then how did you get raised up? Because you're a preacher, and I know you've been studying and going to seminary and all of that, but how, have, how did Pastor Jose utilize you and raise you up and train you to be a preacher? Yes, I, I believe, you know, I don't, I don't think he's here, but I believe he was observing my uh, character. He was observing the way I was, because he was, little by little, he was giving me the opportunity just to, like, uh, in Bible studies, you know. So I believe he was observing my life, and then when he saw that the Lord was doing something in my life, he, um, he continued training me, uh, giving me advices and um, how to, how to uh, preach, or how to teach, and after that, you know, in the providence of God, um, I believe he had to go to, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Santo Domingo, uh, the, the Dominican Republic, and he he was like, you're gonna have to preach, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and I had a sermon prepared already uh, from a long time ago, and just uh, and I was praying. And I was praying to the Lord and say, Lord, if, it's, if this is your will, uh, I got this sermon that you are giving me, this, this word. So if you're going to open a door one day, here it is. Uh, just, I'm, I'm patiently waiting with, whenever you're calling me. And when Pastor Jose asked me to preach, I understood that that was uh, the direction of God and that was the door that I was praying for, and I, I knew that was from God, and that's how I, that's how I preached my first time. So how many, how, how much preaching, you've, got, you've gotten a lot of good preaching experience. Um, do, do you preach like once or twice a month? Have you? I recently I've been praying, I, I mean, I've been preaching um, every, every week, um, yeah. yeah, but uh, before that I was, I was preaching when Pastor Jose allowed me to preach, I was preaching at least twice a year first at the beginning, but then little by little, um, uh, that was increasing. So then I was preaching uh, two times um, a year, four times a year, five, and then so on. And now I'm, I'm preaching every, every Sunday. And then COVID came and P Pastor Garcia got very sick and then you were at the helm, right? Yes, yes. So. <clears throat> That was uh, that was something that nobody saw that coming, you know. So um, I had to step up uh, and started preparing more, uh, just preaching through Zoom, uh, and that that really I think that really helped me to even get more <clears throat> more deep into the word and just prepare myself better. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Pastor Garcia, when we examined. Um, Jose Salgado, he, Pastor Garcia said um, that he, he had begun preaching so well 
that um, he he started getting suspicious, and he said, "Jose, are you are you are you robbing sermons from other people? Because this is way too good." And he's like, "No, oh, this is from the Holy Spirit." <laughs> So praise God for his gift. And, you know, Jesus uh, descended to the lower parts of the earth and death for us. And then he ascended and he gave gifts to men. He ascended in victory. Amen. And this is one of those gifts. And he's right here in our church. I'm so excited. Well, let me ask you a little bit about your time frame for um, ministry as far as, you know, sometimes we hear the longer a healthy pastor stays, the healthier the church is. It takes a while to really get good fruit. So, um, you know, how are, are you? Are you? How long are you thinking that if if you do become an, another associate pastor of Hispanic of Hispanic Ministries here, um, you know, are you gonna you gonna leave us soon and go, go somewhere else, or what is your plans? We, you know, that's one of the questions that came in. Uh, well, my plan is just. Right now, the Lord is, it's, uh, he, my heart is here. Um, I just love uh, my brothers and sisters here. And I don't have plans to go away anytime soon. So, <laughs> but uh, I, can't, I can't say how long I'm going to stay here. But my plan is to stay as long as I can here and just to continue loving uh, the church. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm praying for a minimum of five years, but, you know, it's all in God's hands, right? But um, the, the next question is about our doctrinal statement and your doctrine in particular. Um, uh, are you in full agreement with our doctrinal statement? Do you find joy in preaching uh, the great doctrines of the faith? I, I do, yes. Um, I I am, and um, I, I've been uh, I've been studying and going through the Constitution, the doctrinal statement, and it's just uh, wonderful. Yes, I, I'm in a full 100% uh, agreement in everything. So, yes. Praise God! And in one of the sections in our um, Constitution is the qualifications uh, for an elder, which are basically a blameless life and the ability to teach. And we've already covered the ability to teach, but. Um, would you say, and would Cynthia say that, that, that you're, you're not perfect, but that you are, you are, you're striving and having victory and, and living a, a blameless life, that there's nothing in your conscience that, uh, is, is, uh, offending you or, or grieving the Holy Spirit? No, absolutely not. And this is, uh, like, like you were saying, Pastor Matt, uh, this, I'm not perfect, but, um, I guess the person who can better answer that question is my wife that she is uh, living with me and she knows everything about me. <laughs> so, uh, but I can say, uh, no, I don't have uh, nothing in. One of my prayers is that, you know, I just want to be clear uh, in everything that I do because this is not something to take uh, lightly. This is a serious responsibility. And before the Lord, I know I'm going to give an account and I just want to, I just want to love the church and serve the church, you know, and so I hope that answers that question. Yeah, praise God. Well, I remember just to testify, um, there have been times where um, Brother Jose has called me through the years, and he's like, almost in tears, Pastor Matt, I want to be a better husband. How can I be a better husband? <laughs> and so seeking accountability, living, uh, you know, with integrity. And we've observed that as elders. And I know I'm probably not the only one, but I'm just uh, observing. Um, tell us about your theological training um, and what you're getting out of your, your training. I know you're still in a program, but tell us about that. How's that going? Uh, what are your goals? Yes. Um, <clears throat> before I was enrolled in, um, um, in the seminary, um, I just wanted to keep studying. And... I found an opportunity to uh, get enrolled. I don't know if uh, any of you are familiar with uh, Ligonier's ministry. Uh, they have a ministry which is uh, it's called Ligonier, Ligonier Connect. Um, um, and if, at that time, this happens like six years ago. At that time, that was the uh, only opportunity that I had. 
and I, I got enrolled in that program, which I completed, um, and specifically in the holiness of God given by uh, R.C. Sproul. Um, and after that, I got enrolled in uh, Southeastern Seminary, which uh, I'm currently there. And at the same time, I'm in another seminary, which is called Fruitland Baptist College, which is a branch from Southeastern. Um, currently, I'm pursuing my uh, associate degree uh, and then going for a bachelor degree. You know. That's really exciting. Um, another question here that came in is, does your wife support you becoming a pastor at Living Hope? Because I know you have a job. Um, does she support you? And are you able to care for your, for your family um, while working a job? And then, you know, there's going to be another probably 15 hours or more a week that uh, will be required, you know, to shepherd, to prepare messages. Um, I know this is only a part-time position here, but um, w w is your wife on board, and, and how are you going to balance that work-family um, st strain? Yes, um, she's 100%. Uh, uh, she, su she supports my calling. In fact, she has been praying for me with my children's. And uh, when, we, uh, when we have our Bible studies at home, um, uh, my daughters, they know that I've been called uh, to preach, <laughs> and they pray for me. I, sometimes, you know, I listen when, when they are praying alone, and they pray for me that God can use my life to just to deliver the word. And uh, with the time uh, in how I'm dividing my time in between my full-time job, my secular job, my family, and my uh, ministry, the ministry, uh, uh, that is something that I've been keeping in mind. Um, but that is something that I also, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just giving the time that my family deserve because my family needs to know that uh, you know, I'm not going to be away from them. I have to take care of my children, my wife, serve them. And then uh, I have to take care of uh, the church. And then I have to take care of my uh, other things. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm dividing my time. Uh, and the Lord has uh, helping me to do that. Praise God. Yeah, you shared with us how you had been offered a, a promotion at work and, and uh, you had to turn some of that down because you knew that God was calling you to preach and that you would, you had to choose one or the other. And I'm so thankful that you chose, um, well, I hope this is according to God's will. <laughs> Praise God. I can add something real. Yeah, so um, it was very interesting to know that uh, when this door opened, uh, something I was at my secular job you know, they called me to the office and they're like, we want to offer you this much money, but you have to work extra. And if you stay with us extra time, uh, we're going to give you this, mo this much money. That, now, that, I'm not talking about just, just a, a $2 raise. I'm talking about big money. But that something that came to my mind, this is not from God. Because it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter if they offer me all the money in the world. But I know what God has pulled, put in my heart. And I don't care if I don't make money as long as, as long as I'm making enough and God is giving me enough to survive. I know what God is, he wants me to do. He, he, I know what he puts in my heart. And I reject that offer. <laughs> Praise God. Um. So one of the things that we as elders um, warned you about when we examined you was that if you, if you go this direction, there's going to be a target on your back and Satan is going to be stirred up. And, and, and just after we examined you, you came down with appendicitis and we were all praying that you would be healed and God did heal you. But are you ready for the attack of the enemy because obviously if you're 
working uh, a secular job, you're caring for your family, and you have the the added responsibilities of shepherding and preaching. Um, are you ready to jump into the grace of God and 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 find His grace sufficient for all these satanic attacks? Because they're going to come. Yes. Yeah, so um, God is uh, already been showing me uh, areas that um, that I need help, and I know in the future. I know I will never be prepared 100 percent, but God, I know something. God is leading me. And if he's uh, leading me through many different, uh, you know, trials or whatever, or, or if he, I know he's with me in every attack of the enemy. He's not going to leave me alone. And he's going to teach me as long as I keep going forward and I keep walking with him. Amen. And we've got your back, brother. Uh, there are times when I'll call an elder and I'm desperate. And I don't know why I'm, I'm hurting. Uh, it's just sometimes weariness. But the enemy will attack. And he will make you feel completely unworthy. But we're worthy in Christ. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, uh, changing gears here. Uh, what um, would you say is your passion for uh, evangelism? and your ideas for evangelism. Do you have a heart to evangelize? Are you an evangelist? Yes. Um, I think God has really put that in my heart. When I was, um, when I became a Christian, I just, uh, I was just wanted to tell everybody. And I know that, you know, when you become a Christian, you want to just, you want the whole world to know about Jesus. But that desire was increasing to the point that we were doing evangelism uh, me and my family just uh, going to um, outside to the parks, um, just going and do, uh, by the way, I, I used to do open air preaching, um, and I was doing, um, uh, going door to door. Uh, I just wanted to share uh, Jesus to, to, to the whole neighborhood, to everybody. And yes, um, um, I remember one time, um, God um, allowed me to know this uh, this pastor who was uh, doing evangelism, and I learned so much from him. You know, we were doing evangelism for two years, three years, but this is something that is in my heart as well. So yes, praise God. And uh, as you as if God opens the door for you to be. Uh, a pastor here at Living Hope, and specifically uh, over the ministries um, in the Hispanic church, um, what are some of your passions, your goals, your desires? Um, tell us about your heart for, for this ministry. Yes, um, I choose desire. I just want to see a church um, surrounded with love, unity uh for for the lord and one of my passions for this ministry is just to um to just to have a church that it can manifest jesus with their action which i know who they are but i just wanna i wanna i wanna see the church uh go and i wanna i wanna see church uh and involved in evangelism and that kind of things amen and what about uh biblical counseling how are you how have you been uh are you ready even if you're not necessarily as prepared as none of us are but um are you ready for the load of problems in people's lives that are uh going to come your way and and um Tell us about it, that how, if you're committed to biblical sufficiency and um, does the Bible have the answers for those problems? But are you ready for, there's going to be a load of problems coming your way and they're not going to be calling Pastor Garcia anymore. They may call me sometimes, but probably not. They're probably going to call you. Are you ready for that? Um, first of all, um, 
I believe that the Bible is sufficient for everything. You know, that's, that's the word of God. Um, and one of the things that God has allowed me to do is to uh, uh, counsel, you know, people who are approaching and asking me for counseling. You know, like I remember like three years ago, I had this, uh, I'm not going to mention their names, but uh, it's not from this congregation, but um, they call me and they say, can we talk to you? And I say, sure. And God allowed me to counsel this uh, couple, you know, and they were, we, were get, we were gathering together at home. We were just uh, opening the scriptures, you know. And I, I'm, I'm so, uh, I feel such a joy just to see what God it can do through his word. Um, because now that I see that couple, the marriage, um, they, they say thank you, you know, for, for the time you, you spend with us. And um, I, think, I think God has allowed me to do that. And, and the word of God is sufficient for everything. So, Amen. Amen. And the other thing with um, the biblical counseling ministry, a lot of times um, we don't know what to do. And we just, we have open communication among the elders and we kind of throw the football out there and we toss it around as elders. You know, what do we do? How can we best help this person? What is the scriptural uh, guidance we should give? And we, we all pray. And so um, obviously if God calls you and opens the door for you to be a pastor here, um, there's not only theological training and, and formal training and but most importantly, training by the Holy Spirit, but also training by one another, the, the, by the elders and, and all the people in the congregation. But I have been trained so well by these elders. And, and um, I wanted to ask you um, regarding your, your, your personality, your style of leadership, what are, how would you describe yourself as far as your personality? And, and how that how that contributes to your style of leadership, as well as um, your strengths and, and possible weaknesses. Yes. Um, so I don't I don't want to say I have only one style of leadership because I guess it depends the situation, it depends the moment. But I I will say it's a, it's a mix because, um, but I consider myself a, a energetic person. <laughs> But um, also, um, I'm gonna put an example. Let's say you know if we if we gonna if we gonna testify about Jesus, um, you're not gonna be saying what do you think? Should we testify? What do you think? Should we go and preach? You know, I think that's uh, hands on. Let's do this. We have to do this because the Bible says so. God is commanding us. So, but it, there are gonna be times that uh, obviously you know you're gonna you're gonna have to. Uh, take advices from your brothers and sisters to take to ask them what what, what do you think about this? So I think um, it all depends. I think what what the situation, uh, and I will say it's a mix. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, th that's good, and it's hard to also um, examine. I mean, to uh, judge yourself. Paul said that he doesn't judge himself, but um, my observation of your leadership is zealous, as you just described, uh, energetic, uh, just excited for the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There's also a real uh, illumination from Jesus because you're, of your, your meekness and your humility as you shepherd. Like, I love being shepherded by you, and you've already been shepherding me. Um, so many times calling me, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Are you really doing okay? Pastor Matt, are you sure? Can, how can I pray for you? He knows how to shepherd. And, uh, and, and that meekness, that he, the joy, his hugs, um, all of that is a big part of the attraction. And it's not an attraction because of your personality. It's an attraction because Jesus is, is, is uh, working in you. Um, one of the things about um, strengths and weaknesses, you might not know what your weaknesses are yet. 
but you will find them out. <laughs> and we are trusting that um, the elders will be there for you in your weakness and that you'll have the strength of, of Christ. Um, another question here is, what, who are some of the authors and people uh, who have influenced your thinking? Yes, great question. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I have uh, many, many of them, but um, most of my readings are in Spanish, but uh, I love um, Charles Spurgeon, for sure. You know, I love Charles Spurgeon. <clears throat> I love uh, uh, Matthew Henry, and I love uh, Thomas Watson. You know, I'm currently studying one of his books, which is really, really good. <laughs> um, it's based on Romans uh, chapter 8. Um, but in Spanish, um, I love, um, I don't know if you know some names in Spanish, but uh, Miguel Nunez, yeah. yes, so, yes, um, Suhel Michele, um, so, yes, those, those, those authors are, uh, influenced my life, and I just feel, I feel good when I read those books, you know, sometimes, I'm, I, sometimes I'm not 100% in, uh, you know, in agreement with everything they say, but for most part of, yes. So lightning round here, okay? We're winding down, okay. Are, are, what is your position on baptism? Are, are you believer's baptism uh, or pedo baptism? Are you Presbyterian or Baptist in your view of baptism? All Baptist. <laughs> okay. Baptism, yes. well, don't laugh too hard. There are Presbyterians here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <Okay. laughs> yes. Um, also, um, uh, what is your um, uh, your your view on theology? Are you dispensational? Are you reformed? Do you have a position? Um, yes, I tend. I, I'm a reform. I tend to study more mm -hmm. uh, the reform reformed theology. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then, um, how about um, your position on women in ministry? Do, or what what is your what is your position there? Um, yes, um, I don't. Are you asking what is the role for? The yeah, women's role degree? of women, or yeah. just in general? Yeah, that too. Well, yes. uh, first of all, um, women's are vital for in the church. You know, in fact, uh, when we study the gospels, we're gonna see that uh, when the Lord Jesus resurrected, He appeared to women first. You know, and if we study the culture back in those days, uh, the testimony of a woman it was not uh, credible. So the, the, we, we see when we study the New Testament that the women are vital in the, uh, in the church. Uh, we see how uh, Paul was uh, working in his ministry uh, and depending on uh, and woman, women, uh, we can see how Lydia opened his home for the gathering of a uh, church and so on. But... Uh, and obviously, we know that God created uh, men and women to his image. We know that uh, we all are all equal. But when it comes to uh, roles uh, in the church, I know God, God is it's putting uh, different roles for different persons. And um, the Bible it talks about that um, the women, uh, it's, it's, it shouldn't be preaching, but surely God can use a woman in many different, different ways, and uh, he has done it. We, can, we see it in the Bible. We see it in the New Testament, um, how they are very important and for the church. Amen. Amen. Um, so on a personal level, um, describe your walk with God. Describe your, your daily walk with God, the word, prayer. What, what role does does the Holy Spirit play in your life and your, how are you, you know, what are you reading now um, in your devotions? How are you walking with God to, to talk about that? Yes, um, the Lord has allowed me to just to, um, well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit what I do. I, is, um, so I get up at 4.35 in the morning, so I have my devotional, which um, I'm currently uh, reading in Spanish. Uh, but also, 
after that devotional, I always like to have a time alone only with the scripture. You know, forget about, just forget about um, make, building a sermon or making a sermon just alone uh, with the word of God and just to be able to see the way God speaks to me. And after that, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a time in prayer. Um, and usually that's how my routine is every morning. Uh, when we come home, when I come home, uh, we, have a, we have a devotional with uh, our family. And we have Bible studies at home with my children. And that's how, that's how we do it. You know, we're trying to be consistent, you know. I'm not saying we do it every day, but we're trying to be consistent, you know, and so, yes. And um, how do you plan on coping with um, the stress and disappointments in life and ministry? Yes. Um, who has no disappointments, right, or stress? <laughs> I've been, um, I think we all deal with stress. Um, in fact, um, a few years ago, I was dealing with a lot of stress. But that stress um, is bring me, bringing me to the Word of God because I find, I find that in the Word of God, my soul finds refreshment. And God is my witness that um, I was just going through difficult times, difficult times. And, you know, um, but every time I was going through that time, I will open the Bible, especially in the Psalms, and just let God speak to my soul and just be there contemplating his word. And that really helped me to, to do that. And another thing is that uh, the brothers in the church, they will pray for me. They will encourage me. So that, that was really, really, really helpful. Praise God. Well, we're just about out of time. But um, if you have other questions besides the ones that were submitted, um, feel free to talk with Brother Jose at any time. He's very approachable. Um, if, if you need his cell number, it's, it's in the church directory. Um, I'm sure if you text him any questions or call him, he'd be glad to uh, answer. Uh, but finally, um, we're going to be closing in prayer shortly, but what are some things that we can pray for you about? Yes, um, it's a lot of things, but um, right now uh, we like, if you can pray, please, for my family, that um, I understand that the step that I'm doing here, it's I might not be having a lot of attacks um, of the enemy. So keep my uh, family in prayers, my children, um, that they can continue growing in their faith and walking in the Word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for my precious brother his stand on your word, his walk with you, his precious family. And Lord, I know that um, we're in a war zone. We thank you that we are being fired at because we're going the opposite direction of this world. Help us now. As we seek your wisdom, we pray that you would open a door that no man can shut or shut a door that no man can open. We want your will to be revealed through the hearts in this congregation. And we pray, Lord, for our vote next week, that as we do vote, that you would make clear your will through the congregation's heart. And oh God, thank you so much for Brother Jose. Maybe soon, possibly, we might be able to call him Pastor Jose and um, have another Pastor Jose. And uh, we just thank you. We also want to pray for the Garcia family. We thank you for their incredible service for you here. And we thank you for Pastor Garcia and the way, the way he ministered even through trials that none of us can imagine. And he came out victorious. Oh, Lord, now bless Pastor Jose, his family. I pray for Cynthia and his dear daughters, their dear daughters, and just put a hedge of protection around them. Help them not to be afraid of the devil uh, and help us to display the aroma of Christ, his victory, 
in the resurrection power every day, every moment. May you get all the glory we ask out of Brother Jose's ministry. Whatever you do with him, Lord, set him on fire and may people watch him burn. God, may your, your great things be done for your kingdom and may the, the powers of hell tremble because of the Lord Jesus Christ's anointing upon this man. Lord, do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. You're dismissed.